Hello, welcome to my YouTube channel and thank you for following my Taekwondo science series on sine wave motion. Today I'll explain why the body doesn't always drop down in the initial stage of sine wave motion. When using sine wave motion in Taekwondo, at the initial stage you relax the body and establish a balanced position before performing the technique. This means your body will often drop as you relax and bend the knees, but not always. There are some examples where your body doesn't drop at all, or only very slightly. The shape of a sine wave motion curve can be viewed on a graph representing the height of your body with respect to time. And the shape of this curve depends on various factors such as which stance you start off with, which stance you finish with, and whether you're performing the technique on the spot or stepping forwards or backwards. The reason why the stances affect the shape of the sine wave motion is because your body will be at a different height depending on which stances you adopt. In stances such as closed stance, vertical stance and parallel stance, the body remains tall because the stance is narrow and the legs are kept straight. In neck stance and rear foot stance, the body is slightly lower because the knees are bent and the body height will be progressively lower with longer and wider stances such as L stance, sitting stance, fixed stance, walking stance and low stance being the lowest. An interesting thing to note is that in some stances your body height might be different depending on whether you're half facing or full facing. For example in walking stance your body height will be very slightly higher if you're half facing compared to when you're full facing. The varying heights of the body in the initial stance will alter the shape of the curve and the varying heights of the body in the final stance will also alter the shape of the curve. So let's label these heights as H0 for the initial stance and H3 for the final stance. There are two other points of interest which help us describe the shape of this curve. Let's label H1 as the height of the body at the end of stage 1 of sine wave motion when the body is in a relaxed and balanced position. And let's label H2 as the height of the body when it reaches an apex at the end of stage 2 of sine wave motion. In the next few videos in this series, I'll discuss how these values change depending on the various situations. But in this video, I'll show you two examples of where the body doesn't drop at the initial stage of sine wave motion. So the value of H1 will be greater or equal to the value of H0. If you're in a stance where the legs are kept straight, such as closed stance, parallel stance or vertical stance, and the technique is performed on the spot using the same stance, then you can relax and balance at the initial stage without bending the knees. So the shape of the sine wave motion curve will be like this. There's no dropping of the body during stage 1 and the value of H0 will be equal to H1. Another example is when you step forward from a walking stance. As you relax and balance loading the weight onto your front leg during stage 1, you bend that front leg which has the effect of shortening it because the distance between the hip and the heel decreases. And this gives you the impression that you're lowering your body. But as you move forward, the angle of that front leg changes to become more perpendicular to the floor. This has the effect of raising the height of the hip and this cancels out the shortening of the leg. The net effect is that your body hardly drops at all, or even raise slightly at stage one of sine wave motion. So in conclusion, the shape of the sine wave motion curve can take many forms depending on various factors. And in some cases, the body doesn't drop at all in the initial stage. That's why I don't like to describe sine wave motion as down, up, down. I prefer to describe it as relax and balance up down. Thanks for watching.